Hi, I'm Assam, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACE's Games at Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 25, Questions 67 to 68. And in this unit, we are looking at how birds are able to soar, that is, fly without flapping their wings. We've been provided with a nomogram, which is a two-dimensional diagram consisting of a set of N scales. In this point, uh, and sorry, in this unit, we have four points, so we've got... Uh, Speed, time for full circles, radius of the circular path, and angles and bank. And um, I guess knowing the values of certain variables allows for unknown variables to be found, which is pretty much what this unit wants us to do. Now, we've been nice enough to color code the different sets of scales, whereas obviously ASA, I mean, I mean, the exam is black and white, but they haven't done that, which makes it a bit more difficult to read. But I mean, since the exam now is online, maybe they might introduce color images i doubt it but um it's up to their discretion but um what we're faced here with is just being able to read uh this nomogram now the cool thing is if you just take a look at the last sentence um uh in that unit stimulus paragraph or the last paragraph it tells you how to read the nomogram so if you don't even read the first couple of paragraphs you just read the last paragraph take a look at the nomogram You'll be able to answer um, this uh, unit, I, I wouldn't say easily, but you'll be able to orientate yourself through this unit. Now, you don't have to be an expert in physics to answer the following questions. You just have to use pattern recognition and just know some simple arithmetic and some utilize some simple math mathematics. Now, if we take a look at the first question, 67, it says a mass or a bird of mass two kilograms. Now, um, you probably noticed for question 67 and 68, the mass of the bird is irrelevant. And I'll go through why, especially in 68. But I mean, it's just all, throwing all these numbers around. Um, you probably saw all the degrees, the speed, um, the uh, distance, the time. You're probably just like, oh my God, there's so many things happening at once. But uh, the mass, you don't need to know, which is good. So it says... The speed of the bird is 12 meters per second and its angle of bank is 25 degrees. So if we take a look on the y-axis, speed of the bird is 12 meters per second and angle of bank is 25 degrees. So go across the x-axis so we can see the angle of bank, 25, and our speed is 12. So we can just draw a little dot here for now. Then it says if the bird halves its radius of circular path and increases its angle of bank by 10 degrees. So halves its radius. So we know that the radius, if we drew our dot here, is going to be 32. So the radius of the circular path, therefore, has to be 16. So it has to be on this line here. And then it says we're going to increase our angle of bank by 10 degrees, so from 25 to 35. So angle of bank is going to be 35. Our radius of circular path is going to be 16. Therefore, we're going to draw our dot here. And then it says which of the following is the best estimate for the bird's speed in its new path? Now that we know our uh, point here, we just have to draw the line to speed. So it's about 10 and a half, in between 10 and 11. And the best option there in 67 is 10 meters per second. So therefore, the answer for 67 is going to be D. So straightforward. Um, again, you didn't have to know anything about mathematics. It was just having a keen eye and just following. Uh, it's kind of like a, a treasure hunt, pretty much. You're given all the clues and you have to find the point on the map. So that's how we answer 67. Now the final question, 68, says a bird of mass 2.5 kilograms. You might think you need to use the mass here because they give you the equation for centripetal force, but I'll show you why you don't need to. It says it's soaring in a circular path with a radius of 10 meters. So let's write that down. So our radius is 10 meters. The magnitude of centripetal force acting on it is equal to the magnitude of the weight. Now remember, weight... So e equals mg. So if centripetal force is equal to mass velocity squared over radius, it must therefore equal, because if, if the magnitude of the weight and the centripetal force are equal, then this side has to equal this side. So we're left with this equation. Now it's asking us which of the following is the best estimate for the angle, angle of bank. So let's just try to figure out first what our velocity is. Because once we figure out what our velocity is, we've got radius, velocity, so we've got our um, radius of circular path, our velocity, then we can figure out what our angular bank is. 
So as I said before, we don't need the mass because we can just cross them out from the equation, just like that. So then we can move the r across here, and we're going to be left with velocity is going to equal radius of um, circular path times gravity. Now, it's interesting to note that uh, ASA hasn't given us the value for gravity, but we can always just assume it's going to be, unless they tell us otherwise, the gravity on the surface of the Earth can always be assumed as meters per second per second. So we can rewrite this as obviously velocity squared equals rg. So we're going to say v. So our velocity is going to equal square root 10 meters times 10 meters per second per second. Now I'm always very pedantic about units. I know in the exam you don't have time to muck around, but um, for a lot of students, the training rules fall off um, when they practice because they don't include the units. Include the units so you can understand what's happening here. So it's easy to just show it, therefore it's gonna be square root 100 meters squared s minus two, and therefore you know it's going to equal so we can, if it's square root, we can cross off the what, it's going to be one, we can cross off that, it's going to be one. So this, that's going to, square root of 100 is 10. So we're going to be left with our velocity is going to equal 10 meters per second. So therefore, we have our radius of our circular path is 10 meters, our velocity is 10 meters per second. So we go up here, 10 meters per second, our radius, so it's going to be 10 meters. So we can draw our dot here. Therefore, our angle of bank. So the question asks, what is the following? What, what is the best estimate of angle of bank? Therefore, it's going to be, as we can see here, D, so 45 degrees. Now, um, I mean, this question did require some uh, mathematics, but uh, I think the key and the crux of this unit was just being able to um, utilize pattern recognition, kind of like a treasure hunt, and um, have some some uh, knowledge in uh, some simple physics and mathematics. And if you if you, I guess if you did know how to read the nomogram, you would have been able to blitz for these questions. But again, in the GAMSAT, just make sure if you're seeing these sorts of graphs, take note of the x-axis, the y-axis, and what else is being told. Now, if you have any other queries or um, suggestions or comments, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.